welcome back to my channel and welcome to another five nights of dinners. You guys love these recipes videos. They take a long time to put together because I have five complete dinner recipes for you. We even threw in a little bit of some crock pot. We've got some good stuff in this five nights of dinner. So I'm going to be showing you the points for all five nights in all three plans. So no matter what plan you follow on WW, you are going to have the appropriate points for each recipe. All of the recipes are down in the description box below. So make sure you you check that out. So with that being said, let's jump right into another five nights of dinners on WW. For tonight's dinner, we are going to be making turkey Swedish meatballs, and we're going to pair this with pasta. You could also pair this with potatoes, but we're going to do it over some spaghetti or some pasta noodles. I'm so excited. So let me show you what is in tonight's dinner. First, you're going to need two pounds of ground turkey. I'm using the 93.7. You can also use the 99% fat free, which will lower the points a little bit. I just prefer the texture taste of the 93.7, so that's what I'm gonna be using. Carb Master milk or milk of your choice. Chicken broth, light Alfredo. I really like the Classico brand, it's really good. You'll also need an egg, quite a bit of seasoning. First, you're going to need some lemon pepper, and I'm going to be using Dax. This is my favorite seasoning. It is no salt, all natural, no MSG. What's great about Dax is the seasonings are literal, real, whole ingredients. There's no salt. Great if you watch your salt intake, and also great before weigh-in. So this particular one, which is the lemon pep, is spices, lemon peel, and dehydrated garlic, dehydrated onion. That is all that is in this seasoning. They have great seasonings, over 20. Check out their website. My code here on the screen will get you 10% off and free shipping. I have every single spice and I love them all. So lemon pep from Dax. You're also going to need some paprika, minced onion, parsley, and nutmeg. Also some salt. And for the binder, I always use the Pepperidge Farm Herb Season Stuffing Mix. You could also use breadcrumbs. I just prefer this as my meatball binder. I think it adds great flavor, and it's usually lower smart points than most of the breadcrumbs out there. So I'm going to be using that. And then for our pasta, we're going to be doing the Fiber Gourmet Light Spaghetti. I love this pasta, not only because the taste and texture are amazing, but it has 19 grams of fiber eight grams of protein. It has only 23 net carbs and is non-GMO. And the best part is you can have three ounce or two ounces, I apologize, two ounces dry for only three smart points. So half the smart points of regular pasta. And I'm telling you, it's absolutely delicious. So if you're interested in fiber gourmet pasta, you can purchase this off of Nettrition's website. There's a link down below. Just click the link and you can enter fiber gourmet in the search field and it'll pop right up. So that is the pasta that we're going to be using for tonight. So let's get started on tonight's dinner. So let's get started on our meatballs. So in my bowl here, I have my two pounds of 93.7 ground turkey. To that, I'm going to add one egg. And basically, we're adding everything to form our meatballs. I'm also going to add three quarters of a cup of my Pepperidge Farm breadcrumbs. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt, two pretty good size pinches of salt. And then I have one half of a cup of my Carb Master milk. You can also use use Fairlight. You could even use unsweetened almond milk. Just make sure it is not vanilla flavored. And then we're going to go ahead and add in our lemon pepper. And I'm just going to season this to my liking. Uh, if you want to follow the recipe directly, it wants about two teaspoons of the lemon pepper. And then we're also going to add in some minced onion and we want about a tablespoon of minced onion. We also have some dried parsley. You could use fresh parsley, about two tablespoons worth of that. Paprika, I have the Trader Joe's smoked paprika. We are going to add about a teaspoon 
of paprika. Now, I do not measure. Feel free to pull out your measuring spoons, but I just kind of eyeball the spices. And lastly, we're gonna add about a half of a teaspoon of nutmeg, and that's gonna add a good flavor, believe it or not, to our meatballs. And then we are going to dig in with our hands, and that's what we're gonna use to form our meatballs. It makes it easiest to combine the meat with all of the rest of the ingredients. So dig in, mix that meat up, make sure that everything's nice and combined. You get that egg mixed up really well. That's your binder along with the breadcrumbs for your meatballs. So we're ready to get going on our meatballs. This looks so good, it smells delicious. So I have a pretty large size pan here. I am going to spray it with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray. I just don't want my meatballs to stick. And then instead of going back in with my hands for the meatballs, I'm gonna use one of my little scoops here. I bought these off of Amazon. It was a four pack of different sizes. I wanna say it was like $10. I do have it linked down below in my Amazon store, but this is really the easiest. You just get in, scoop yourself out a meatball, pop it in your pan. So it really is a lot easier than digging back in with your hands. You might not get the perfect round meatball, but this is good enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my meatballs into my pan here, and then we'll get these cooking up on the stove. So I have my meatballs cooking up here in the pan. I have it over medium heat. We're gonna let these meatballs cook completely through. Little tip for you, don't turn them until they've cooked pretty darn good. Otherwise they will fall apart, especially when you're using the scoop or really just meatballs in general. Let them cook a bit before you flip them. And then over here I have some water coming to a boil and that's what I'm gonna go ahead and cook my pasta in. So let's get this dinner going. I just flipped our meatballs, so see how they're browned on one side? That's what you wanna make sure you're doing before you flip them. Once they cook three quarters of the way, we'll flip them again, and they'll flip much easier as they start to cook. Once your meatballs are cooked all the way through, the original recipe wants you to add two cups of chicken broth. I'm actually going to only add one because I did use less of the light Alfredo sauce than the original recipe called for. I did six ounces of Alfredo sauce, which is about half of what the recipe called for. So I'm gonna be using half the amount of chicken broth and we are just going to let these simmer in that Alfredo sauce and that chicken broth for about 15 minutes. It'll become nice and thick and make a really delicious gravy to go over our pasta. And here are our Swedish meatballs. Look how thick that gravy ended up getting. Yum. And so I have some vegetables in the microwave. I went ahead and plated up one sixth of the pasta. The recipe makes six servings total. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add four meatballs and some of the sauce. I made 24 meatballs, so it is four meatballs per serving. All right, so here is the completed dinner. This looks so incredibly delicious. So like I said, the meatball mixture and pasta makes six servings total. So this is four meatballs with a little bit of the sauce and one sixth of the pasta. I did just put some carrots in the microwave in a steamable bag with some, I can't believe it's not butter spray, salt and pepper. So my meatballs here on the green plan, which is the plan that I follow, the meatballs themselves with the sauce is seven smart points. And then it is three additional smart points for the pasta. The carrots are zero, so this entire dinner you guys, with Alfredo pasta sauce is only 10 smart points. I will put the points here on the screen for the other plans, but I'm very excited about this. What a great decadent dinner for 10 points. For tonight's dinner, we are making beef stroganoff bubble up casserole. This sounds incredible. I cannot wait. So let's jump into what's in tonight's dinner. First, you're going to need a seven and a half ounce can of biscuits. I'm going to be using minced onion in place of raw onion only because I'm out of onions. Someone forgot to buy them at the store. So you could do minced onion or regular. You'll also need some paprika, garlic, salt and pepper, one and a half cups of water, 
non-fat Greek yogurt, beef better than bouillon, tomato paste, Worcestershire sauce, mushrooms, 96.4 extra lean ground beef, and some sort of light mozzarella cheese. So let's get started on tonight's dinner. The first thing that we're going to do is start browning our ground beef. So I have it here in a pan. We're just gonna get this nice and browned. And in the meantime, we're gonna get our pan prepared with our biscuits. So the first thing that I did is took out half of the biscuits out of the can. Each of these biscuits we're going to cut into six pieces. So they're just gonna be little small chunks of biscuits. And these are gonna be layered in the bottom of a nine by 13 pan. My hamburger is still cooking and browning up. So I'm gonna get these cut and then we'll get these layered into a greased nine by 13. Deep end, we're alive, living life underwater. Let's spend all we've got getting buzzed. You pretend you're a god, I believe I'm a soldier. We play hide and seek till you draw. Love ain't got nothing on me. Once your hamburger is just about cooked all the way through, go ahead and reduce your heat and we're gonna add in our eight ounces of mushrooms, which is one full package. We're also going to add in four cloves of minced garlic. And this is also where we're gonna add in our onions. So of course, I'm just gonna use the minced. And then we are gonna let this cook for about five minutes or so, just until the mushrooms have softened. Once everything has softened, your mushrooms, your garlic, we are gonna go ahead and add in some salt. So I'm just gonna take some salt here, sprinkle it over the top of my ground beef and my mushrooms. I'm also going to be adding in some pepper. And then we are also going to add in about one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I never measure, I just kind of add it in to my liking. There isn't much left in this container. So we want about a tablespoon of that. We also want about a tablespoon of tomato paste. I love it in the tube because it's easy to, if you don't use it all, you just throw it back in your refrigerator and it doesn't go bad, I love that. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and just add in some paprika. And then we're gonna give this a stir, let this just cook down for just a couple more minutes to get those flavors nice and melded together. This smells incredible. Once that has warmed up about five minutes or so, we're gonna go ahead and add in some of the beef better than bouillon. So I've never used this before. I'm really excited about it. People say that they love it. So I'm going to put in about two teaspoons. So there's one. It smells really good and I got the organic on accident. It was so expensive. But anyways, I did get the organic and then we're gonna go ahead and add in about one and a half cups of water and that's what's going to mix the bouillon together. And I've heard that it's way better than the cubes. So I'm excited about it. I'm gonna throw it in my fridge and I'll make sure that I definitely incorporate it into some other recipes. Even you can use it in recipes that call for chicken broth or beef broth or veggie broth. You can use that instead if you don't want it to go to waste. Cause like I said, it's pretty pricey. I wanna say that the little jar here was about $7. So it is expensive. So we're gonna let this cook down for about five minutes, then we're gonna remove it from the heat. All right, so here it is. It's been sitting off of the heat for about five minutes after it was on the heat for an additional five. We're gonna go ahead and add one third cup of a non-fat Greek yogurt, and we're gonna stir that in. That is what is gonna make it creamy like beef stroganoff usually is. So we're gonna go ahead and stir that in, get it all mixed together, and then we're ready to assemble this bubble up casserole. So this is ready to go. I have my nine by 13 pan with my cut up pieces of biscuit. Super easy. We're going to take the meat and vegetables and we're gonna go ahead and pour it right over the top of the biscuits. And we're just gonna spread that out nice and evenly. And then we're gonna take the other half of our can of biscuits that we've cut up into six pieces as well and place those right on top. Eating, you're a god, I believe I'm a soldier. We play hide and seek till you draw. Love ain't got nothing on me, bad boy. Running, I got you on my own. 
So this is going into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. We'll pull it out, top it with cheese, and throw it back in for a few more minutes. But you guys, this looks delish. Look at this beauty. It looks so delicious. My house smells delicious. So I pulled it out of the oven. It's been 21 minutes. I am going to top it with four ounces of the mozzarella cheese. I did weigh it out on my food scale. And then I am going to put this back into the oven for another 10 minutes or so. We just want to get that cheese nice and melted. Make sure the biscuits are cooked through. Oh my gosh, you guys, this looks so delicious. So I'm going to get this cheese on here and we'll get this back in the oven casseroles out of the oven. Doesn't this look absolutely delicious? So I'm going to let this cool for just a couple minutes. We're going to cut it into six servings. I'm going to pair it with some leftover carrots and I'll be back to show you my dinner and give you the smart points. So here is my completed dinner. I am excited for this. So I have one sixth of the bubble up beef stroganoff casserole one sixth is seven smart points on all three plans now if you substituted the ground beef for 99 percent ground turkey it would lower the points on both blue and purple but i kind of wanted some ground beef so i stuck with the original recipe and then i paired that with just some leftover steamed carrots spray butter salt and pepper so this entire delicious dinner is only seven smart points For tonight's dinner, I'm gonna be making crock pot chicken and gravy. This is supposedly delicious, so I'm super excited about this. Just to let you know, this is not the Felicia Fitness Health recipe. This is a different one, and I heard that this is amazing. So let me show you what is in tonight's dinner. First, you're going to need some fat-free half and half, cornstarch, onion powder. The recipe calls for poultry seasoning. I do not have any, so I'm just gonna substitute a little bit of rosemary, garlic, powder, not salt, two cups of warm water, chicken breast, chicken better than bouillon, and salt and pepper. So let's get started on tonight's dinner. So first thing that we're going to do is put in our two cups of warm water into our crock pot. Highly recommend a crock pot liner. It just makes cleanup so much easier. If not, I would recommend spraying your crock pot just to be on the safe side. Then we are going to be adding in three teaspoons of our chicken better than bouillon. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball about three teaspoons here. Two and three. Okay. And then we're going to add all of our seasoning. So first we're going to put in a little bit of salt. Now salt is optional. I'm going to salt it because I find that crock pot recipes can be a little bit bland if you don't add some salt. We also want some pepper. So I'm going to put in two pretty good size pinches of pepper. And then we're going to add in some garlic powder. And I say season to your taste. So we like our food, like I said, very flavorful. And then I also have some onion powder. And this is really gonna bring out some of those flavors as well. And then lastly, some rosemary. And this just kind of grinds your rosemary fresh for you. I did pick this grinder up at Walmart. I usually get a lot of questions about it. And again, this is in place of the poultry seasoning. And then we are going to take a whisk and we're just gonna whisk this together. We wanna make sure that the seasonings and the better than bouillon get all mixed together with that warm water. And then we're ready to add in our chicken. Once it's all whisked together, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our chicken breasts and we're just going to kind of nestle them down into the mixture. We want to make sure that we kind of get them pretty submerged so that they really take on the flavor of that better than bouillon and all those yummy spices. So we're going to get those in and then we're going to go ahead and turn our crock pot. I'm going to put mine on high because I am starting this a little bit late, but I'm going to cook it on high for the first couple hours and then pop it down to low for another three to four hours or until our chicken is cooked through. Our chicken in the crock pot is just about done, so we're gonna make the gravy portion. So I have my cornstarch here. To my bowl, I'm gonna be adding three tablespoons of cornstarch, so we'll add that. And this is basically what's gonna make that nice thick gravy to add to our chicken. 
Once you add in your three tablespoons of cornstarch, I have half of a cup of fat-free half and half. I'm gonna add that directly to my cornstarch and I'm gonna mix this together. And what I want is a slurry. So I want the cornstarch to mix in really well with the fat-free half and half and we're gonna make a slurry that we're going to add to our crock pot. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the lid of our crock pot. It smells delicious in here. Woo, look at that chicken. So it should be tender enough that it's going to shred on its own as we mix together. So we're gonna go ahead and add in that slurry and make sure we have it nice and mixed here. So we're gonna go ahead and add in that cornstarch slurry and then we're just going to mix it. And the chicken, oh yeah, look at how tender that is. It's just going to shred on its own as we mix in the cornstarch. And that's what's gonna give us a nice thick gravy. You do wanna go ahead and turn your crock pot to high if it's not already on high before you do this step. That way you make sure that it's hot enough to get that cornstarch to make that gravy. So go ahead and mix it together, let it thicken up, shred up your chicken, and we are good to go. I'll be back to show you my dinner and give you all the smart points. So here is my dinner. So I have one half of a cup of the Idahoan roasted garlic instant potatoes. These are delicious. You can have half of a cup for four smart points. And then I have one serving of the chicken and gravy. Three quarters of a cup of the chicken and gravy is five smart points. So this is a nine smart point comfort food dinner. For tonight's dinner, we are going to be making the best copycat Chick-fil-A sandwich. I'm gonna pair this with some fries and some veggies, but first let me show you what is in our chicken sandwiches. First, you're going to need some all-purpose flour, powdered sugar alternative. I am using the So Nourished brand. This is linked down in my Amazon store below. Light milk, I have this Carb Master milk. You could use Fairlife, you could even use almond milk. You'll also need some lemon juice concentrate, an egg, chicken, and a bunch of seasoning. So let me tell you what's in my little bowl here. I have paprika, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, celery salt, rosemary, dill weed, basil, sage, thyme, celery seeds, and cayenne. So I have all the seasonings in this little bowl here. So let's get started on our Chick-fil-A sandwiches. So step one is we are going to take our chicken breast. I went ahead and cut mine in half because they were really large chicken breasts. We're gonna put them on a piece of saran wrap. We're gonna fold that saran wrap over the top of our chicken. And then we are going to use whatever you prefer. I'm just gonna use a rolling pin and we're just going to pound our chicken until it is a little bit flatter. We want a thin breast of chicken for these sandwiches. And the recipe does suggest that you add a couple of drops of water to your chicken breast before you pound it out. I honestly don't ever see much difference, so I did not do that. I just went ahead and just put the chicken breast in. So we're gonna go ahead and get it pounded out. And if you have a meat mallet, that's probably even better, but I do not, so my rolling pin is going to work. So I'm gonna get all four of my chicken breasts pounded out nice and thin, and then we're ready to throw them in some lemon juice. Look at that nice thin chicken. We're gonna go ahead and add some lemon juice to our breasts of chicken. And then we're just going to let these sit in the bag here with the lemon juice while we put together the rest of the ingredients for the coating on our chicken. That's just really going to make it nice and tender and flavorful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and toss this in the fridge. While our chicken is in the lemon juice, we're gonna go ahead and take one egg, go ahead and crack it into a dish. You can even use a shallow dish if you'd like. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this bowl here. And one quarter cup of whatever milk or milk alternative that you're using Using. and we're just going to mix this all together and then we're gonna go ahead and add those seasonings to a Ziploc bag so that we can coat our chicken. So next I went ahead and added one cup of flour here to my Ziploc bag. To that I'm gonna add one tablespoon of my powdered sugar alternative 
And then I'm also going to add in that whole bowl of all of those yummy seasonings. And then we're just going to give this a mix and get that all nice and combined. And then we're ready to dip our chicken into the egg mixture and into the flour mixture. And then it's ready to go into our air fryer. Ready to do our chicken. I have my air fryer rack here. I did coat mine with some nonstick cooking spray. You can also do the same with your basket. I have my chicken, my eggs, and my flour. So what we are going to do is we're gonna go ahead and pull out one thin slice of chicken and we're gonna throw it in the flour mixture and we're just gonna shake it around and get that chicken coated in the flour mix. And then make sure you are shaking off any excess. Woo. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and put it into the egg mixture. And then we're going to put it back into the flour mixture. And again, shake off any excess that you have. And then it is ready to go onto the rack or into the basket of your air fryer. So make sure we get that nice and coated here. All right, so there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on my rack. So there we have it, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three breasts of chicken, and then we're ready to get this into the air fryer. You're so wild. I'm not gonna fight it, hypnotized. Stuck inside my mind because you gotta, you gotta be something. So here's our chicken all ready to go into the air fryer. I do have another rack here. I'm gonna go ahead and put some fries on there. Let me show you what fries that we're having. So I'm gonna be making these Lamb Weston Super Crispy Crinkle Cut Fries. Just your standard fry, you could do whatever you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of those out on this rack and then we'll be ready to get everything into the air fryer. So here's our chicken. I did go ahead and spray it with a little bit of cooking spray on top and I'm actually going to put that in the middle rack because I don't want the chicken to drip on my fries and I'll put the fries in on the top rack. So I went ahead and set my air fryer for 20 minutes at 375 degrees. And then I do have a light for my air fryer. So there you can see the chicken and the fries. Now, if you're interested in my air fryer, I do have the Power Air Fryer Oven Elite. It is linked in my Amazon store below. I love it. You can do rotisserie chickens. There's a basket and then the racks make it easy. You have three racks total. You can air fry a lot of food at once. So I love my air fryer. So I'm gonna let this cook. Now, if you don't have an air fryer, you can cook these in your oven. So don't feel like you can't do that. So I'm gonna let these cook. I will probably rotate the shelves once the chicken gets about done cooking, just to get it nice and crispy and give the fries a little bit of a break from the crispiness. I'm not gonna fight it, hypnotized. Stuck inside my mind because you gotta, you gotta be something undefined. Oh my goodness, am I excited. So I have four of my Chick-fil-A chickens. Chick-fil-A chicken and some fries. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some pickles to our sandwich, Chick-fil-A style. These are the buns that I'm going to be using. These are three smart points a piece. They are the lowest point bun that I can find in my local store. We're gonna top it with some mayo, just like Chick-fil-A. And then I'm also going to be using some of the G Hue sugar-free ketchup to dip my fries in. So let me put my dinner together. Oh, and we're having peas. They are in the microwave. And I'll be back to show you my completed dinner and give you the smart points. So here is my dinner, you guys. I couldn't be more excited for this dinner. So I have one of my buns, one of my copycat Chick-fil-A sandwiches. I have one dill pickle, the baby one sliced thin, one tablespoon of the light mayo. And then I went ahead and counted out 11 of the French fries. 11 is three smart points. And that's about what I wanted to spend on fries. And then I'm just gonna, again, dip it in a little bit of sugar-free ketchup for zero. I have a half of a cup of peas here. It is two smart points on the green plan, zero on blue and purple. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the points across the screen for you for the entire meal. But for the actual Chick-fil-A, breast of chicken itself. It is three smart points on both the purple and blue plan and six on the green plan. So this is my dinner, you guys. What could be better than copycat Chick-fil-A? On WW for low smart points. For tonight's dinner, we are going to make a recipe that I love in my family called Waikiki meatballs, but they are not WW friendly. So 
I'm putting a spin on those and we're gonna be making pineapple turkey meatballs, which are super similar to Waikiki, but way less in Smart Point. So let me show you what you're going to need for tonight's dinner. You're going to need a pineapple, minced garlic, panko breadcrumbs, soy sauce, fresh ginger or ginger paste, cornstarch, 99% extra lean ground turkey, one cup of water, a medium sized onion, salt and pepper, and lastly, an egg. So let's get started on tonight's dinner. So the first thing that we need to do is chop. So we're gonna go ahead and chop up our onion. I have a little bowl here for that. We're gonna go ahead and cut up our pineapple and I have a bowl here for that. So let's start chopping so we can start making some meatballs. together so you can see here that I have my pound of 99% extra lean ground turkey so to that I'm gonna go ahead and add one cup or one quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs I'm also going to add one egg and my chopped up onion the recipe wants you to put it in a food processor and get them really finely chopped but I want them a little bit bigger chunks in mine that's the recipe I'm used to for the Waikiki meatballs we're also going to add in a couple of pinches of salt and we're also going to add in a couple pinches of pepper and then the last thing we're gonna put in is some of our minced garlic and I just want about a clove worth of garlic. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that. We're gonna give this a mix, get everything nice and combine. So this is what is going to make our meatballs. So we're ready to roll our meatballs. So here's our meatball mixture. I did line my baking sheet with some parchment paper and we want 24 meatballs. So I'm gonna get these rolled out. We'll get them put here on our parchment paper. And we're just gonna toss these under the broiler for just about 10 minutes or so, just until they get nice and crispy. Parchment paper does not like me today. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just put those out. So I'm gonna roll out 24. You're so wild. I'm not gonna fight it. Hypnotized. Stuck inside my mind because you gotta you gotta be. with 17 meatballs. I did forget that the original recipe wants you to use a pound and a half of the turkey and I only used a pound. It doesn't really matter the number of meatballs that you get. You're just going to divide it by the number of servings and this recipe only makes four servings. So that's basically four meatballs per serving. So these are going to go under the broiler for 10 minutes or until they're cooked through. While our meatballs are under the broiler, we are going to make our delicious sauce. So you're gonna need a blender. So what I have here is my cut up pineapple pieces. So the recipe calls for one to one and a half cups. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this all in here. Um, my pineapple is super ripe and super delicious. So little extra pineapple never hurt anybody. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our ginger. And we want about two teaspoons of fresh ginger. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one and two. And then we are also going to add in one cup of soy sauce. You can also use coconut aminos. So whatever you have on hand is totally fine. We're also gonna add our one cup of water and two cloves of minced garlic. And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and take one tablespoon of cornstarch, and that's just what is going to get our mixture nice and thick. So then we're gonna go ahead and pop it here on our blender base, throw on our lid, and get this blended up and ready to go. And there is our sauce, doesn't that look so good? So we're gonna set this aside because we're gonna add this to the meatballs in a pan once they are done under the broiler. 
with our meatballs, I'm gonna go ahead and cook up some jasmine rice. So I went ahead and did one cup of jasmine rice, two cups of water. We like our rice kind of sticky, and we're gonna cook this up along with our meatballs, and our meatballs are coming along really good down there in the broiler, and then we're gonna add them here to this stock pot with our sauce. So I just pulled the meatballs out. Pro tip, don't use parchment paper under the broiler. Luckily my rack was down one extra level so it did not catch on fire, but close call guys, so use tin foil. So I have my meatballs and then I went ahead and put my sauce into my big stock pot here. We're gonna go ahead and add the meatballs to the sauce and then over here my rice has come to a boil so I've reduced the heat and we are just gonna let that cook. So we're gonna let our meatballs cook here in the sauce until the sauce is nice and thick, probably about 10 minutes or so, which will be perfect timing for our rice. So our rice is done. I just wanted to show you guys that I'm gonna be having one half of a cup of rice, which is exactly what is in this. So we're just gonna put that right there in the middle of our plate. And then let me grab the rest of my dinner, put it together, and I'll be back to show you my dinner and give you the smart point. So here is my dinner for tonight. This looks so good. So I ended up having, like I showed you, one cup of rice, one cup, or I'm sorry, one half of a cup of jasmine rice is what I served up, and that is five smart points. And then as far as the meatballs with the sauce goes, I'll put the points here on the screen for you, but basically it's zero points up to two meatballs on the blue and purple plan. And then it's only one smart point up to six meatballs. And on green, it's one smart point for up to two meatballs, and then three smart points for up to six meatballs. So I have five for my rice, three for my meatballs, and I only have four meatballs. And so this is going to be a total of eight smart points. Thank you for joining me on another five nights of dinners on WW. I hope you enjoyed seeing all five of these recipes. Every single meal was delicious. They are all WW friendly and family friendly as well. Husband approved, kid approved, great recipes to share with your family. Again, all of the recipes are linked down in the description box below, along with any other discounts that I can offer to you and links to some of my very favorite things. So definitely check out the description box. Also is the link to my Facebook group. So if you have not joined my Facebook group, we are 13,000 members strong. It is an amazing supportive place to be. Lots of great ideas, recipes, support there for you. So make sure you head on over and join my Facebook group. We'd love to have you be part of that community. If you're new, welcome. I hope that you take a moment and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. You don't wanna miss out. I'd appreciate a big thumbs up if you love five nights of dinners and leave those comments down below. I wanna hear which of these recipes are must tries for you. So I hope you enjoyed another five nights of dinner on WW and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.